O Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let that light shine in this moment as your word is heard and proclaimed. Amen. Amen. That angel sure picks an interesting crowd to announce the birth of Jesus to. You would think that this angel would go to the temple in Jerusalem, where all the important religious figures are, or maybe to Rome to speak to all those important politicians. But instead, this angel appears to these shepherds living in a field. And let's be honest, it probably wasn't even their fields. Back in that time, shepherds were not generally respectable people. Others saw them as rather shady because they would let their flocks graze on other people's land. They were scorned and they were outcast by society. A modern day equivalent might be those who are experiencing homelessness. <coughs> and standing on the medians around town with cardboard signs. There are those who react with compassion, but there are many who despise these folks. This is how it was for those shepherds back in that time. They were not embraced by the rest of society. They were outcasts. And so on this quiet night, they are just minding their own business, keeping an eye on their sheep, perhaps trying to dodge the owner of the field that they were squatting in, perhaps taking turns, getting a little shut-eye, taking turns, keeping an eye on those sheep, when out of nowhere, this angel appears to them. Luke tells us that the glory of the Lord shone around this angel. And so in the dark of this night, all of a sudden, these shepherds have this incredible thing right there in front of them, and naturally, they are terrified. Of course, very few have seen the glory of the Lord in person, so they have no idea what is going on. And to make the situation more terrifying, the angel starts to speak. So this isn't just some optical illusion that's appeared in front of them. This heavenly creature is actually talking to them. I wonder if the shepherds thought that this was some representative from the Roman Empire coming to tell them to stop bumming off of other people's land and get real jobs. But instead, the angel says, do not fear. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Frankly, I'm impressed the shepherds were able to hear any of this. That they were somehow able to listen despite their tremendous fear. The angel goes on to tell them that there is good news, that the Messiah has arrived, the Savior has been born. And they're instructed to head on in to Bethlehem. There they will find that baby, wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. When those instructions are delivered, the angel is joined by a heavenly host, perhaps dozens of angels gathering their voices together to sing in celebration of this event, praising God for the birth of this child. And just like that, the angels are gone. The shepherds are left in that wide open field. And despite the fear that they felt just moments before, they make their way toward Bethlehem to see that very special baby. The news of the birth of Christ was enough for them to set aside their fear and trust that this good news is indeed good news. When I think about those shepherds setting aside their fear and trusting that angel, I can't help but think about a Charlie Brown Christmas. <laughs> I would venture to guess that most of us have seen this classic Christmas film. Perhaps you're like me and you make a tradition of watching it each year. I was surprised when I traveled to Colombia that most of the people I encountered there have seen this film. They too have it as their Christmas tradition. 
it's known throughout the world. The movie starts out with Charlie Brown lamenting about how nobody likes him. He's having a very Charlie Brown moment. He just doesn't understand the joy of Christmas. He trudges through the snow. The other children mock him as he goes. And he approaches Lucy for advice, dropping a nickel into her can. Well, Lucy tells him that they have to figure out the source of his fears, that that's the way to find a solution. They together decide that he has pantophobia, the fear of everything. She tells him that the cure for this melancholy is to get involved in something Christmassy. So she recruits him to direct their Christmas play. Lucy's always got an agenda. Charlie Brown hesitantly agrees, and he shows up to the auditorium. But the other children scoff at the idea of him directing their play. <coughs> he has messed things up in the past, and so they figure this will be no different. Lucy helps everyone get in line and hands out the scripts, assigning parts. Even Snoopy gets to get involved, playing all of the animals in the nativity scene. But Charlie Brown notices that there is a lack of spirit on the stage. So he sets out to find a Christmas tree to liven the mood. Well, as you know, he returns with that sad little tree, nothing more than a little twig with a few needles on it. The other children, of course, make fun of him for it telling him that he doesn't understand the meaning of Christmas. Charlie Brown feels even more down than before. But then, Linus steps up, and he says he knows what Christmas is really about. He cues the lights to dim, he steps onto stage, and he recites the line from the play, which come from Luke chapter 2, we read just a few minutes ago. He speaks about the shepherds in the fields and the angel telling them that the Christ child has been born. And when Linus gets to that line, fear not, for behold, I bring tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. At that moment when he says, fear not, Linus drops his security blankets. <laughs> Now, this isn't just some mistake on the part of the animators. This is a profound moment when Linus lets go of his fear as he says those words, fear not. It's one of the only times we see him let go of that beloved security blanket. But he's able to release that anxiety, to let go of that fear. And he turns to Charlie Brown when he's all done, and he says that is what Christmas is all about. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Linus picks up that blanket as soon as the monologue is over. But at the end of the cartoon, when we see the children gathering around the refurbished Charlie Brown tree, he once again lays that blanket down, this time tenderly wrapping it around the base of the Christmas tree. The children sing a hymn and recognize the true meaning of Christmas. Linus once again sets down that fear, and this time, I think, he sets that fear before God, allowing God to hold on to it. We don't see Linus pick up his blanket again in the movie. This is such a remarkable illustration of the power of those words from that angel. Do not be afraid. These words are comforting enough to, for Linus to drop that security blanket, to trust this good news that Jesus has been born. Do not be afraid. These words are comforting enough for the shepherds to leave their flocks and go see that baby wrapped in cloth lying in the manger. Do not be afraid. These words are comforting for us still, 2,000 years later, and we desperately need to hear these words over and over again. We need to hear these words in our broken and fearful world, our world filled with so much uncertainty and anxiety. 
This year, 2017, seems to be a year of heightened fear for some reason. We've experienced more natural disasters in one year than in most previously. The results of the election last year have left our nation divided and neighbors are angry at one another. People are fearful of the future. When we hear this Christmas story from Luke, we can be assured that the birth of Jesus is bigger than any of those fears that we have. Whether we fear that no one likes us like Charlie Brown, whether we fear what tomorrow will bring, whether we fear what is happening in the world today, all of those fears are taken on by Christ our Lord. The one who comes to offer the gift of releasing those fears, of taking away our anxieties and reassuring us that we are in his care. Reassuring us that God is with us, Emmanuel. As Linus says at the end of his monologue, this is what Christmas is all about. It's all about this radical story of a baby born to unusual circumstances. Having his birth announced to this rather unusual crowd, bringing all of the comfort to the world in those words, do not be afraid. <clears throat> the birth of Jesus invites us to drop our own security blankets and instead to cling to him. In Christ, we find a deep peace that no matter what is happening in the world, we can be confident that love is stronger than hate, that hope is more resilient than fear, and that light can and does enter the darkness. Dear ones, take heart, have courage, do not be afraid. Alleluia. Amen.